bit about myself. Um, Dr. Elliot, I told everyone I founded Christmas Spectrum Foundation. It's actually my husband, too. He is a co founder, um, he's an IT director, and um, he has experience with Asperger's as well. And I'm a special needs sibling. So that's my sister. She's autistic. And so that's how we kind of got into this, this field of care. Um, my whole goal was to like bridge a gap um, with the job skills training, especially after um, a young adult reaches the age of 22. Uh, what I want to do is make sure that we get them out in the field and um, like working or either working remotely. And what I found is you can teach these skills um, virtually. And the crazy part is, is we actually started our foundation in 2019, December 2019, and then the pandemic hit. <laughs> so we were like right, right there trying to figure it out. Um, we had created some programs and we were going for grants too. One of them was called the Spectrum of Health Advocacy. And that's where we had planned to take people in and like coach them. And it was going to be like a reward system where they were, um, they received information from us. We went over like a six week process of working one on one with them for probably like an hour a week to go over these important life skills. And then they would graduate and they could coach the next person that came into the program. Um, unfortunately, we didn't receive funding for it. But during that whole process is when Andrew was actually, he was uh, receiving payment for his work then until the funding we didn't receive, we were beat out by Baylor. And she's like, okay, it's Baylor. <laughs> we'll take that, we'll take that L. So the loss is so, um, we stopped for a bit and then we got the foundation back together and we found board members. We are still looking for board members. So if you are interested in participating, that would, we would love to have you and um, Kelsey can send you over information of how to fill that participation form out. Uh, what we do as far as Crystal Spectrum is concerned is we yeah, have a couple. Oh, it's working. Okay, so this is what we do. We teach those job administrative uh, skills. Um, we also have these workshops. We just started this workshop. Um, we help with job transportation. We go to resource fairs, job fairs. Um, and we just try to make it where they can achieve employability and also get out into that social setting and get to meet people. Um, Andrew goes to a lot of our job fairs and he's our representative and he's like, hey, we got this workshop coming up. My name is Andrew. I work here. And it's really great because he works on his presentation skills, even though he had those before he started here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I put this up and it says, why work? Well, working is beneficial in many ways outside of monetary rewards. Uh, work is a way to help us with social skills, development, um, skill set, and identity. I have worked uh, primarily remotely for like eight years now. Um, we've had the company a little over five years. And I've been in Houston almost eight years. And one thing that I found out by moving here and working remotely is I made my friends at work. And a lot of people do not realize that interpersonal relationships that you make at work, that's what keeps a lot of people at their jobs. Mm -hmm. And it can be hard working independently because you're spending so much time alone working in your own space. So you might need that independence, but you also need to be around people. We're humans, we have patterns, we want to belong. And it's very important because we get to a point where you're so sheltered that it could be like a shock. And in my field and experience, I've worked with some parents who, you know, they kept their, their young adults at home or didn't get them out much. And we still have to realize that we are like biodegradable. We are going to pass. And the worst thing you can do is keep a child at home and not get them out to experience. And then one day you're gone. And it's a shock. It's like total shock. So having them have a hobby, getting out, working, a sense of achievement, having that praise, acknowledgement, learning, that's what keeps us going, that's what makes us thrive. And that's why you can also realize that when people retire and if they don't go volunteer, because a lot of people are like, I don't want to volunteer, it's free work, but if you don't do something, you're going to sit there and you're never relapse, you're not moving as much, and that's why it's like important to stay active and be um, out there. And that's where those job skills come in, at, especially in this technology age. So why do we focus on administrative job skills? 
Uh, administrative jobs are always needed, no matter what. Somebody's going to need help with data entry because even though you could probably go through a service or an app, they're not always going to get it right. You got accents that come to play. They might not pick up where your period is supposed to. And then it makes sense, like where you're supposed to have a comma. Things of that sort is where you really need humans. And then we also have an aging population. And I don't know about y'all, but the last time you probably called somebody, did a human answer? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you can get me a human. I think it's right. Right. <laughs> And so things like that is something that someone that has a disability at home can do. Customer service, they need to talk to people. You know, just like when you go to a website and a bot comes up and it says, how may I help you? There's somebody else on that other end. If it's not a template, and that is something else that people with disabilities who are at home can do this. And it doesn't matter which job they're working with. You work for Dell Computer and you can even be at Walmart. They need those customer representatives to help out. And I'm so um, the reason why we picked these jobs is because, like I said, they're, you can learn them at home. They're not really going anywhere. And some of these jobs, you might seem, it might feel like, oh, that's easy, but you might think you know how to file until you're looking at a, a folder with a name, and then you have to remember your age in your head. So it's things like that. Like the, you know, Miller comes before Mc, McMiller or McMahon the MAC or the MC, things of that sort, especially if you're creating a database with digital files and organization, it's pretty uh, important to know those things and to have those links and things available. Because of right now, if we look around, we don't have that much paperwork, which in the, back in the day, you probably would have came in and had like five different um, sheets of paperwork to put together, to put in your folder. And you might've got a little bag and you took it home and didn't mean you were gonna read it. You could have put it up with your other resource materials. So teaching things of like how to create a hyperlink where I can email you or text you, hey, I need you to join the Zoom link because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's yeah. enough. So that's what we're looking at, sorting. Um, I keep going. Yeah, like sorting, data entry, keyboarding. Keyboarding is important too. That's a skill that you're eventually going to need, even if you're typing on the phone. Um, and you can start out here and, and we can go over it little by little. Um, there's been some incidents, I don't think with this new generation, where some people are even scared to use the computer. So just giving them comfortable to use a computer in a setting is also good. And those typing of uh, uh, typing classes that we can go through. Template creation, MailChimp, like Andrew helped us today with that, just getting an email blast out and let people know. Um, and, and he does pretty good on that. He also sends me a test email to make sure that goes through as well as answering the phones, um, email etiquette. Like I said, marketing and resource fairs. I'm sorry to let you do that. Just give me a thumbs up and I'll do it. So we have our class enrollment. We're going to start enrolling people in our program um, November 14th. And the first class is on January 11th. It'll be from 9 to 4 p.m. It'll be in a room setting like this. And we'll work one-on-one -on, -one on basic skills. They're not going to learn everything in one day, but we're going to just sit down, see where they at, do a little discovery to see where they're good at and on which area they want to work in. Um, only, let me see, uh, the requirements to attend that workshop is they're going to have to have a laptop, so a portable device. Um, I put the ability to type 20 words per minute, which is, is really not that bad. Access to Wi-Fi and a willingness to learn. Okay. Um, this is, um, I wish I could show you this picture, but I can't, but it shows like some of our annual events and, and what we uh, do at the organization, what our donations go towards. Um, we have Family Fun Day for Autism Awareness. That is, it originally um, happened in East Texas where I'm from, so we did that almost 10 years ago, and we still periodically put that on. We did it last year and had a good turnout. Um, we would like to do the same thing here in Houston. We just got to find the ground and space to do it. But that's a pretty good event. We do in April as well as the Autism Resource Fair. And we participate in Mikey's Place um, Resource Fair as well as Lakewood Church uh, Resource Fair. Um, and we also do some volunteer work. And we also go to Texas Workforce. So our 
Family Fun Day annual events, it typically has 200 to 500 people that turn out. Again, that's in the small town. So in that small town, we can get a helicopter to come in, a fire truck. <laughs> and Houston, they're like, no, you're not just going to get it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to pay for that. But yeah, but we're able to pull it off in small rural areas. Um, yes, yeah, that's the next one. So that's basically the short presentation and how you can help us survive. It's just by your donations, spreading news about these workshops, letting us know what we can do to bring better information to people and as well as help get them out in the community, working and networking, things of that sort. Um, I'm really proud of how we were able to get this together because this year we have achieved every goal that our board set out which is really neat because we're such a young board and we really didn't start until this year. So this is our last event for this year. But in January next year, we're going to come back a lot stronger and we're going to have these workshops and have them like centered to where they need to be. And that's basically Crystal Spectrum Foundation. I'm five minutes early. That's okay. Do y'all have any questions for me? I probably said that really fast. And huh? you know everything, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know. You've been here from the beginning. So that's basically that's the presentation. But um, you can go to our website and you can see all the activities we've participated in. Um, I'll make sure that everybody has a link to this information. I have a couple of published articles about um being a special needs sibling, things to consider when you put your child in a group home. That's a really good one because my sister has been in a group home setting and institutional setting since she was 12. And it's things there that even when I work for an organization that has a, they've sold out since a um, couple of years now, they had a good group home setting. But what parents don't, didn't, I felt like they didn't realize is it's one thing to put your child in a group home where it's the senior population versus a group home where it's a young population. And parents, that's something that they need to know just as well as if you want to go that route, you do need to make visits. The more you make visits, the less that anything bad is going to ever happen. But if you go like once a year, that's not that's not beneficial and it's not good. And you'll be surprised that some people just don't go. Mm -hmm. um, so those are things to consider as well as if you need somebody to go out and recruit these places, not recruit them or vet them and go see how they really are. Because they'll speak to a parent differently than they'll speak to a professional and different than um, they'll speak to a person. So if you know the place and you're able to go in there and see what's going on, it helps out a lot. Some places are very good. And so wrote an article about that. And I think I told y'all my doctor is, I'm not a physician. <laughs> I have to make that clear. Some people are like, can you write me a doctor? No, no. I can write you a doctor. <laughs> but it's not going to get you what you, you want. You know? It's going to have a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so my doctor is in business administration. This is the ninth business that I have started. Um, one of the longest that I've, I've kept going. So I'm really big into entrepreneurship. You know, there's a way for you, you to make money doing anything, especially if you love it, you're not working. And that's why I think that these job skills are so important. I was doing research on YouTube last night and I was amazed, like even like medical transcriptionists, just working for yourself, it's like $55 an hour. Um, data entry jobs, things like that. But I do know that parents are in a tough spot, especially if you have a higher learner and you're looking at that social security and those benefits. So they still got to make something up along the way just so they can have a sense of life, a sense of pride and, and feeling like they achieved the job and accomplished something just like we all want. Yeah. Human element. So that's, you know, I think sometimes people forget like, hey, part-time job is my client. That's perfect for her because she's happy yeah she's growing and that it's not you know it's part-time and I mean, and it's all about learning experience. I also feel like we need to get in there as people who, I mean, we might all have a disability, but it's a bit masked and we're able to cope. Mm -hmm. But I feel like we do also need to be in that setting so we don't uh, patronize people with disabilities. So many times I see that and it bothers me. Like I have some clients who are nonverbal, but they're geniuses. When people mm -hmm. will grow up and yell at them. 
And I'm like, they're not there. They were. <laughs> yeah, are you being rude or just like, hey, how are you doing? And it's like, that's a grown person. And those are some skills that we miss out on. But I've also worked with some people with disabilities that treated people without disabilities. <laughs> Super rude. So we do need to have that, that bridge and inclusiveness so we can know how to all treat each other because we're all different and we're all going through something and we all just want to go through life, you know, living our best life and being as happy as we can. And if one person can go into their job place and say, hey, this is how you make this person feel or even explain to this person with disability, this is why you shouldn't do this. It makes it a better workplace and it overall improves the work-life balance and that person's sense of self-worth. So that's why I'm super passionate about doing this side of the business as well as personal assistance service where we provide the respite care that people need. And that personal side, uh, personal assistance service side, we assist with um, showers, transfers, toileting, meal prep, medication reminders, appointment uh, setting, transportation, companionship. So we do all of that stuff on the other side of the business. But this one is more so geared towards jobs and younger adults because that's another gap is when you turn 22, it's what's next. Well, that's my it's spiel. It's like a longer age, 21. You know, that is, that is, that is. <laughs> it's a lot more past 22. Yeah. So are there any questions? No. Well, that is our time today. I want to thank everybody that's online. Thank you. It was You're great. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thanks for coming. And I'll definitely update you guys on our next workshop. We got some things to add. And we'll try to get out any links or yeah, and we'll contact information today. Yeah, we'll try to get all that information out earlier. And when you come back, I'm going to have a doctorate in using them. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great You're weekend. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all have a great day. Yeah. <laughs>